In this video, we'll be looking at the total periodic pension costs under the defined benefit pension plan. So the total periodic pension costs is also called the periodic pension costs. Okay, and uh, either term will do. And the cost here would involve the pension costs both in the PNL as well as in other comprehensive income or OCI. So the total periodic pension cost is equals to the periodic pension cost in the PNL, which uh, the textbook calls it pension expense, and or sometimes they call it reported periodic pension expense, and then we'll plus the periodic pension cost in OCI. Now we'll first look at what are the components in the PNL as well as the OCI under IFRS and US GAAP. Okay, now so under IFRS, uh, what we will recognize as part of the pension expense or they call it the periodic pension costs in PNL is the service costs okay for both current and past and then we will uh, add in the net interest costs or income if it's income uh, we'll denote it as a bracket which means minus okay and for OCI we will have the remeasurements okay and this will include the actual gain okay or loss our loss will include it as a bracket which is uh, negative and then we'll add in the actual return minus the uh, the interest income, okay, which is from the uh, from this component here. So the interest income will be the discount rate, which we also use to calculate the interest costs multiplied by the beginning plan assets. Now over to US GAAP for the income statement or the PNL, the periodic pension costs in the PNL would cover the current service costs, same as IFRS. Now the difference here, of course, is uh, we will first recognize the past service costs in the OCI and then we will amortize the past service costs to the PNL. And then uh, we will still add in the interest cost this time, okay, not net, okay, just interest costs minus the expected return. And then we add in the actual loss, okay, or gain, which is amortized from the OCI. So the amortization here is done using the corridor approach. Now under the OCI for US GAAP, we have the actual gain or loss, okay, which uh, of course a portion of it may be amortized to the income statement. And then we have the actual return minus the expected return. Okay, it's the same expected return that we saw here. Now, then of course there is the past service cost, okay, which is uh, not amortized into the income statement. Now in the balance sheet, let's look at how we derive the total periodic pension costs. So we'll start from scratch. So we start off with the ending PPO. So to calculate your ending uh, PPO, we'll start with this equals to the beginning PPO. Okay, uh, there's a projected benefit obligation. Then we add in the current service cost plus past service costs plus interest costs plus actual loss or gain. And then we minus benefits paid. Then on the asset side, we have our ending plan assets equals to beginning plan assets plus actual return plus employer contributions minus benefits paid. So let's uh, take the difference between the two. So I'll take uh, the ending plan assets minus the ending PBO. So that results in this equation. So the difference between ending plan assets and ending PBO, this is your ending funded status. That's equals to the beginning plan assets minus beginning PBO. Then we plus actual return employer contributions minus benefits paid. And then we minus uh, the current service cost, minus past service cost, minus interest cost, minus the actual loss or gain, and then plus benefits paid. Okay, so of course uh, the benefits paid here will offset. So uh, and then the difference between the plan assets and PPO is the funded status. Okay, so I'll call this uh, funded status. So there's the ending and the beginning funded status, and then the rest are the same uh, except for the benefits paid, which has been uh, removed. So now we start to rearrange the equation. Okay, so that I will have uh, some uh, the main of the cost component on the left hand side. So on the left hand side, I will have the current service cost plus a past service cost plus interest cost plus the actual loss or gain and then minus the actual return. So take note that there is no expected return here, just the actual return. And on the right hand side, we have the employer contributions minus uh, the ending funded status minus the beginning funded status. So take note that uh, this is in a bracket. So the difference between these two is called the change in funded status. Okay, and this right hand side here is equals to this left hand side terms. Okay, and this is called the total periodic pension costs.
which is equals to employer contributions minus change in funded status. Okay, so that's just to show you how uh, the formula is derived. Okay, so in a way, once you know how it's derived, at least it will be easier for you to remember the formula. So again, uh, total periodic pension cost is sometimes just called periodic pension cost. Now, so the total periodic pension cost, just to reiterate again, it is equals to the periodic pension cost in the PNL plus the periodic pension cost in the OCI. So the periodic pension cost in the PNL based on IFRS is just the current service cost plus past service cost, and then we plus the net interest cost or income. Now the net interest cost or income we can split out into interest cost minus interest income okay and interest cost is based on the discount rate times the beginning PBO and then for the interest income it is the discount rate times uh, beginning plan assets so of course if you were to combine these two points okay if you were to factorize the discount rate uh, what you will have here is this is equals to the discount rate okay times the beginning PBO PBO uh, minus beginning plan assets. Okay, so that's another quick way if you want to derive the net interest cost or income. Then lastly, for the periodic pension cost in OCI, you can just take the periodic pension cost in PNL, subtract from the total periodic pension cost, so that will give you the periodic pension cost in OCI. Okay, which is mainly just the actual loss or gain plus uh, the interest income. Okay, which is based on this term here. Uh, then we minus the actual return. Okay, so if you try and sum up these two, you will reach back at the same formula again. And for next part, we look at the US gap under uh, in the PNL. Okay, you will have the current service cost. You will also have the past service cost, but it's amortized from the OCI. Uh, we have interest cost this time. Okay, and then we minus expected return. And then we add in uh, amortized actual loss or gain. Okay, this is based on the corridor approach. Now, for the interest cost, is again based on discount rate times uh, beginning PBO. But for this round, the expected return is based on expected return in percentage times the beginning plan assets. So the difference between IFRS and US GAAP is that uh, in IFRS, we call this a discount rate. But in US GAAP, the so-called discount rate is set equals to the expected return, okay, in percentage here, okay. So there's this uh, the difference between US GAAP and IFRS. So just keep that in mind, and then don't forget to add in the amortized actual loss or gain. So in the OCI, uh, what we have is the unamortized actual loss or gain, okay, and uh, the expect plus the expected return, okay, minus the actual return. And then we add in the past service cost, which is unamortized. Okay, so in other words, uh, whatever you have here, okay, if you subtract from the total periodic pension cost, that will give you the periodic pension cost in OCI. Now, in this example, we'll look at the components of the periodic pension cost for defined benefit plan uh, under IFRS for the year 2019. So I left some of these blanks so that we can fill it in. Uh, so that you can see how the numbers are computed. So we have the components of the periodic pension cost here, which includes the service cost, the net interest expense or income, and then the remeasurements from OCI. So the total will be your periodic pension cost or the total periodic pension cost. Then we have the change in benefit obligation. Okay, at the beginning. Uh, so this is the benefit obligations at the beginning of the year, forty-eight thousand plus service cost two eighty. Interest cost is blank. Uh, benefits paid is two thousand. Actual loss uh, or gain is 400. Then for the plan assets, we have the fair value of the plan assets at the beginning of the year, 43,000. Uh, actual return on plan assets is 2006. Employee contributions is 900 and benefits paid is uh, 2000. So then there's a funded status at the beginning of the year and the end of the year and the discount rate is 5%. So let's compute uh, the numbers here. So of course, uh, service cost you can just we, we can just fill it in straight away. So that's uh, two eighty. Okay, next part is the interest cost. Okay, so interest cost here is the discount rate multiplied by the beginning PBO. So that in other words, this is uh, five percent times uh, forty eight thousand. So that will be equals to five percent times uh, forty eight thousand. So that's a uh, two thousand four. Okay, so now we fill up this. So 
48,000 plus 280 plus 2004 minus uh, 2000 plus 400, that's uh, 49,080. Then for plan assets, 43,000 plus 2006 plus 900 minus 2000, so that's 44,500. Right, then uh, to get the net interest uh, income or expense, okay, we, so it's net, right? So we need to calculate the interest costs, okay, which uh, we know it's equals to 2004 here. Then we need to minus the interest income portion, okay? Or this is the assumption that we are using to calculate the return on the plan assets. So this will be equals to 5% times the beginning plan assets, which is uh, 43,000. So this is equals to 5% times 43,000. So that's 2150. Okay, so that's 2150. So if you take 2004 minus uh, 2150, so that is 250. Okay, so this is how we compute the net interest uh, expense in this case, is, since it's positive. So uh, the remeasurements part, okay, we will have the actual uh, gain and loss and, and also the actual return versus the expected uh, return or the interest income portion. So this drag it here, so we have the actual uh, loss, okay, it's an actual loss here because this is positive, okay, uh, if it's positive, it's a loss, if it's a minus, uh, that means it's a gain, so this is a 400 in this case. Alright, then uh, what about the actual return? So let's calculate the actual return minus the so-called uh, interest income in this case. The interest income or the expected return on the plan assets is uh, 2006 uh, minus 2150. Okay, so this is equals to uh, 450. Okay, so in this case, uh, the excess amount here, you have an excess, uh, the actual return is higher than the interest income, so there's an additional return there. So this addition, this is a gain, it's a net gain, So this, but this is a loss. So if you net it off, okay, if you net off 400 minus 450, okay, loss minus net gain, so that is negative 50, okay. So in other words, your gain is more than your loss. So this is actually a net gain, and the net gain should reduce your cost which is why I wrote it as a negative here, because the gain will reduce the net cost here. So in total, the periodic pension cost or the total periodic pension cost is 480. So we are going to confirm this number using the other formula. Okay, so let's do this. So the funded status at the beginning of the year, okay, is equals to the beginning fair value of plan asset minus the, uh, the beginning PBO. Okay, so that's uh, 43,000. Uh, minus 48,000. Okay, so that's a negative 5,000. And then for the funded status at the end of the year, we take the fair value of the plan assets at the ending ending of the year, end of the year. Okay, then we minus the benefit obligations at the end of the year. So this will be 44,500 minus 49,080. So this is uh, negative 4580. So we'll use the formula now. So the Periodic, the total periodic pension cost is your employer contributions okay minus the change okay change in funded status so employer contribution is 900 and the change in funded status here is uh, negative 4580 minus negative 5000 okay so that will be equals to uh, this is 420 okay so that's uh, 420 there so if you subtract that you will get 480 okay so that ties back to the periodic pension costs which we just uh, computed earlier so again uh, the periodic pension costs uh, can be calculated by using this form of the formula or we can take the long form okay which is to take the service costs okay both past and current and then we add in the interest costs okay and then we uh, add in the actual loss or gain actual loss uh, slash gain then we minus the actual return okay we should get the same number as well so the service cost here is 280 so that's 280 plus interest cost uh, which is uh, 2004 okay plus the actual loss which is 400 
and then we minus actual return which is 2006 so in this case uh, 280 plus 2004 plus 400 minus 2006 okay that's 480 all right so that ties back to our answer as well so you see uh, it's not too uh, difficult to do uh, as long as you understand uh, i mean the different usage of the the different versions of the formula